Most architectural or engineering, construction, general contractor or fabricator offices in the world, if small enough, do not have a full-time programmer employed, someone who we would describe as a computational designer. First, I have to say that I do not like that term because it implies that the computation happens in the design phase of the project. Now, in the general understanding of the term, design is a very small part of the whole project. In my 16 years of programming, less than 5% of my work was done in the design phase. The rest was in bringing that design to life. So using the term computational designer, in my perspective, limits us to this small phase of design and exploration, when in practice our skill set can be used for every single phase of the uh, building's life cycle, including the construction site and the operation after the building is erected. But it is a term that is relatively established at the moment, so that is why I used it here as well. And let's go with it for now. If you think that programmers have nothing to do in a classical architectural office, I will tell you straight out that you're wrong. They're not necessary per se, but they can speed up your work enormously and they can make your design more robust, more precise and more sustainable. You as a human can only test a couple of design options in your head and with the help of a pen and a paper. You can also draw and model slowly by using your mouse and go through thousands and thousands of clicks because you, before you have your drawing and your 3D model. Now, algorithms can do all of these things much faster, but I talked about that before in many other videos. So, is there anything new I want to say? Well, yes, there is, and it might shift your perspective on how to perceive the role of a programmer or a computational designer inside an architectural, engineering, construction, contractor, or fabricator company. If you Google programmer or developer jobs, you will often see something called software architect. Beside the obvious connection to our building world, what does the software architect do? Well, they think about how the entire application they're building should be structured. They create these high-level design plans that serve as blueprints for the development team. And I would argue that is probably the most important thing. It can make huge differences in how software works and operates. It is the foundation and the skeleton of a software. Now, let us come back to the world of buildings. What would the counterpart of a software architect in the AEC world be regarding the implementation of programming? aka computational design. Well, in order to explain that, I will set the stage by presenting two extreme examples of how you can approach designing and modeling of a building. Now, imagine if on the left of the spectrum we have something that we have in most offices today. The building is designed and modeled manually. That means that someone uses one of their hands to hold a mouse and then clicks for every single point, line, beam, wall, window, etc. Thus creating sketches, drawings, 3D models, details, Excel part lists, schedules, etc. On the other side of the spectrum, imagine if the entire building is programmed and parametrically defined. There is an algorithm that takes a single point as an input and then generates the entire digital twin, LOD 400, at the click of a button. It generates the fabrication plans for every element, installation, assembly plans, sections, views, tender documentation, all the Excel lists at, the, at that one proverbial click of a button. Now. My claim for why every office needs a programmer rests on the fact that the most efficient way to design and model is somewhere in the middle. That means there will be things that should and will be done manually and things that should be automated. Well, what should be done manually and what should be automated? Solving that puzzle is precisely the job of someone equivalent to the software architect. Let us call them the computational design architect. In the same way that a young developer needs to gather years of experience before they can see a larger picture and become a software architect, the computational design architect needs to have a years of development in the building industry behind them before they can understand what can and what should be automated. They have to understand the main trade-offs between manual work and automation. Let me break that down. How do you decide if you want to program something? There are a couple of parameters, like how complex is your project, how probable are changes throughout the design, throughout the design process, and can you detect patterns and rules in geometry and information? In order to understand this, let us talk about extreme examples again. You're modeling a small wooden house. The design is completely done. You're sure you will not change anything. You just need to model it and prepare it for fabrication and assembly. There are no particular patterns aside from the obvious repetition of standard elements like wooden columns, studs or facade elements. So if you need one week to complete this model and the drawings and need two weeks to create an algorithm that would generate the entire house automatically, then you absolutely do not need automation. Of course, unless this house is supposed to be prefabricated, but that's another story. Now, let us look at the other end of the spectrum. Let us look at the project like the Madison Square Garden in Las Vegas, on which I worked for almost two years. 
thousands and thousands of unique elements, very complex. The degree of change is high as we are modeling. That means that there is a large probability of changes that can affect the entire model and would require redoing the model. And there are lots of patterns that can be programmed. Even if the end result are unique elements, their generation follows a certain pattern, certain rules. And this cannot be modeled by hand. If it did, the construction would, be, uh, would last as much as Sagrada Familia's, like 100 years or so. So now let's talk about most of the architecture out there. The middle. The computational design architect's main job is to decide what can be done manually and used as an input for computation, what and how can be computed, and what will the output be. So look at the Shara Zedek Medical Center building we just finished last year. Take this piece of the facade. Do you manually draw this curve and then create all of these columns automatically? Do you actually draw these lines manually and then create the 3D automatically? How do you create connections, like model them from scratch, just define the position and generate an algorithm from a single point, or maybe create an outline and take that as an input? So questions like this are the responsibility of an experienced computational designer that we call computational design architect at this point. And how about the optimization of the entire project? What can we uh, analyze in order to improve our design? Can we analyze how much light gets into the building? It's thermal efficiency, wind resistance. Can we do a crowd simulation? test out different shapes based on this criteria, can we try out different materials and different facade elements and so on and so on. For every project there are so many decisions like that that have to be made and someone with experience can make all these decisions and make a plan. How do we automate the process of design and modeling and eventually building? What do we draw, what do we generate automatically and how do we implement everything together? What software solutions do we use, what languages, what file formats, etc. You do not have to call it computational design architect, you can call it a manager if you want. You can call it that person that knows programming. Whatever you want, but that person can make so much savings in time and money and make your project so much better, more efficient, more sustainable. Yet most of the people are not aware of this skill set at all. And they should be, that's why I'm here. And all of you know how many changes happen throughout the design of the project and how costly they get. Most of you know the McLeamy curve that tries to simply demonstrate how costly changes can get when they happen later in the project and you cannot implement them at the click of a button. So having a parametric model is invaluable. Now let me tell you a story if you need more convincing. Working on the Sphere project we used a lot of automation to generate the statical finite element model with 200,000 structural members or so. And without getting into details there were something like 40, 50,000 couplings. Those are simple connections between elements, usually some normal screws that have to be modeled in the large uh, finite element model. And let's say it was decided to try to have these couplings every 60 centimeters or so. But then let's say we decided to try to have them every 40 centimeters to test if we gain in stability and what the trade-off is. And what do you do now? How do you model new 50,000 couplings? And remember, every structural member has to be redivided as well. If you modeled manually, you could do this with a couple of people in a year or so, clicking away. If you have a parametric model, you will do this literally at the click of a button. Or look at the Shenzhen airport I worked on almost 15 years ago, where the architect would change the entire double curved surface every week or so, and we had to regenerate the entire structure and facade. And in your project, whatever it is, you know at some point you will make some changes that break the whole model. Or at least you will wish you could change the grid, change the height, change the width of all windows, and how many times you do not do what is right, and something that can make the project 10 times better just because there is no more time. These trade-offs and opportunities to automate modeling are there, in every project, every house, hospital, school or entertainment center. The question is if you admit it or not, and the more important question is if you want to do anything about it. Now think about it carefully, whether you're an architectural, engineering, construction, fabrication company or even one that deals in operations. Think about the trade-offs, savings and the quality of your output. And if you have any questions, my virtual doors are always open. Talk to you soon. Stay free.